Hello there, everyone. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. This is Shalini Joshi Amdagni, and welcome to this week's uh, Facebook Live, uh, where I share uh, tips, tools, strategies, stories to inspire you, to make you aware, to move you uh, from a place of pain to more peace and clarity. Hi. Hi, Pachuri. Hi, Nui. I, I've tried to start this Facebook Live a couple of times. Um, I don't know what's going on with the internet today. Anyway, our topic today is uh, the power of meaning in creating suffering. And I'm going to be sharing tips and tools on how you can reframe the meaning and stop the suffering. Okay, so thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're joining live, uh, come and say hello. And if you're watching this on replay, Welcome, and if you're brand new here, welcome to you too. Um, I, I do Facebook Lives uh, every Thursday, same time, 11 o'clock. And if you are someone who is feeling stuck in some area of your life, you know, uh, if you're looking for more peace and for more clarity and you're feeling stuck in pain, then you might wanna, you know, uh, check out the Facebook Lives that I do. I'm always sharing tips and tools, and today's topic is the power of meaning in creating suffering. Okay, so uh, here's what we're gonna. Here's what's a heads up on what's coming up. So, um, sharing our meaning making mind. <laughs> um, a, a short story about a man, his son, and a horse. Um, the phrase that we use all the time, this means that, and actually I wanted to write here, I didn't. Uh, I'm gonna be sharing the ABC system that was created by a guy named Albert Ellis, okay? On how we create meaning and consequences. And uh, number four is questions that you can ask yourself to dissolve the meaning that you're creating and also tips to reframe so that you can end the suffering. So uh, welcome everyone. So this is, uh, you know, the, the, the first uh, point is the meaning making mind. And as human beings, uh, we have this tendency to give meaning to everything that occurs in our lives, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's, you know, we have, uh, we, it's, it's kind of like we are programmed this way of so many eons and eons of, uh, ages so you know anything that happens we tend to give it meaning and sometimes it's great because that meaning uplifts us it supports us it empowers us and 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 gives us strength to move forward uh but sometimes you know we have this tendency to give unnecessary meaning to events in our lives that eventually cause suffering and unhappiness and um Kind of hold us back and keep us stuck right and uh so i wanted to share a quick story about a man his son and a horse so once uh there was this you know there was a farmer and he lived in his village with his son and a horse and i've shared this story before so if you've heard the story, uh, I think it's always great to, to have a reminder. So there was a, there was a farmer who lived with his son and a horse and the people in the village thought, wow, this guy is so lucky. He's, you know, he has a horse, uh, horses can be used for transportation, for plowing the field. So they all thought he was lucky. And one fine day, the horse ran away. And so the villagers, you know, were commenting on, you know, to the, uh, they came to the villager and they said, oh, we're so sorry, such a terrible thing has happened, right? And the farmer said, maybe, maybe. And then a couple of days later, the horse returned with two wild, two more wild horses. And the villager said, wow, you're so lucky. Now you'll have even more help and more support and all of that good stuff. And the farmer said, maybe. A couple of days later, as the son was trying to tame the wild horses, he fell off the horse and broke his leg. Now again, the villagers come and they say, this is so bad, you know, it could have been different. And 
you know, how unlucky are these horses? And the farmer said, maybe, maybe. Again, a few days later, these men come, the army men, to recruit young adults, right, for the army. But the farmer's son's leg is broken, broken and he's not of much use to the army. So they take the other young adults and, you know, the farmer is the only one who is left with his young adult son. And the farmer, you know, and the villagers again come and say, wow, you know, you're, you're, you're so lucky. Your son didn't get recruited. And so the farmer again says, maybe. And this is, uh, I think, a wonderful story to show that the meaning that an event has, right, it's really uh, depends on the frame with which you are looking at the event. Like the event in itself doesn't have the meaning and we just tend to give meaning to, to what's going on, right? And it depends on the frame with which we are looking at the event. And it can seem upsetting, it can seem uh, terrible, it can seem uh, whatever it seems through the lens with which we are seeing and the meaning that we are giving, you know, the event. And uh, there are so many times uh, when you think about your own life, right, we, we tend to uh, give unnecessary meaning uh, to our experiences. If you have, you know, if you wrote an email to someone and they didn't reply and you think, oh, you know, they probably don't like me. Um, I'm not good enough or they just, they're just ignoring me. I'm not important. And we'll give like a gazillion reasons, right? And meaning to no reply from whoever we send the email to. Um, you know, you have an experience just yesterday, I was, you know, my, my son was studying and he was really st stressed about his um, upcoming test. And I, I said something to him and he just replied sharply back and I said, he's just rude, <laughs> right? And so, you know, I, I'm looking at this event. He replied this way, he's rude. I gave meaning to that event, but does the event in itself have meaning, right? Does the event in itself has, you, can you see the meaning in the event, in the experience that happened? And usually, no, because like 10 other people will have, uh, see the same thing and they will attribute different meaning. So we have this tendency, you know, to give all kinds of unnecessary meaning to an experience, to an event, and then we beat ourselves up and we say this means that and this means that and then we get resentful and we feel frustrated and we, we create all kinds of stories and the event may have gone long ago but we're still beating ourselves up and we're creating so much suffering because of the unnecessary meaning that we've given to the to the experience and you know here are some things i was writing down like you know, my boss will be upset and you've got some scenario and you, you're saying that, you know, if I do this, 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 then the boss will ups be upset and nothing's happened, but you are assigning meaning. Uh, here, here's the example I was just giving, you know, she didn't reply my email. That's, this means that. And how many times do we, do we say that, right? That this means that I'll give you an example of, uh, uh, you know, an experience that I had uh, and, and because I do a lot of cleaning and a lot of tapping. So this came up and, you know, I, um, you, you know, when I was doing some work on not feeling good enough and I was uh, you know, looking back, I remember an event that occurred when I was, I think, four years old, four years old. <laughs> and uh, I used to dance, right? And uh, I was you know, in the, on the center stage. And there was like a circle around and I was in the center of the stage for a while, right? And in one of the dance performances, like my teacher took me from the center stage and she put me with, along with, the, with the, the people at the back and there was somebody else in the center of the stage. And you would think it's such a harmless, uh, you know, it's just, it's just uh, an, an event that happened but 
when I went down to not feeling good enough, you know, as an adult, 40 plus year old, you know, and I went back and I, I remember that event and it brought back so much hurt and sadness that, you know, to the four year old brain, it meant that, okay, now you're not good enough. You, 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 you don't have the talent. You, you're not good enough. You deserve to be behind. And, you know, I read all kinds of things into that little experience where the teacher just put me back on stage uh, with, with the rest of the group and somebody else was new. And there are a gazillion ways that we assign, you know, uh, meaning to experiences and events. And there's this guy, I mean, I'm sure you can think of some experiences even as adults just interacting and, you know, you, you, you go for a networking meeting and you've met some of these people before and <clears throat> you walk in and they're busy chatting and they don't have time to say hi to you and you think, my gosh, he's ignoring me, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I'm sure you can relate and, and think of all the unnecessary meaning that you've given to different situations and suffered because of it, not only in that that moment but you continue to suffer for a long time i know i have clients who've you know who have held on to uh meaning and suffered for decades and of course when you're suffering it's impacting your relationships your health your your you know what's what you're attracting because you've got met a negative mindset so you keep attracting the same kind of experiences right and and there's this wonderful man you know, a lot of research has been done into how humans, we give meaning and create suffering. And one of the earliest studies, you know, was done by this guy called Albert Ellis. As I was researching, I found, found uh, him. And he did something called rational emotive behavior therapy. You can Google the guy. Rational emotive behavior therapy, right? And he, he talks about something very interesting he says he created a system it's called the ABC system right ABC so a stands for the activating event B is for belief your personal belief and C is the consequences so he calls it the ABC system right and what he's saying is that the activating event doesn't lead to directly to the consequences, to the result, right? A doesn't directly lead to C. A is colored by the frame of B, and that could be different for every single individual on the planet. And that creates the result. Uh, and it could be, you know, if, if you have an experience and you have, you know, you, you have wonderful beliefs, then your, the, your consequences and what you experience of the event is something completely different. Haven't you, you know, you go to a movie and say, I love the movie and somebody says, I hated the movie. It's the same movie, but it's all the stuff that goes on inside of you that's creating meaning and eventually creating your, uh, the, 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 the experience that you have. Right. So I thought it was really fascinating how, you know, like the meaning, the, the event itself, there's no inherent meaning. Like if everybody was looking, right, I have so many clients who've gone through all kinds of experiences. And unfortunately, this B, it could be, you know, a result of something that's going on today, but mostly it's a result of long held beliefs all the way from our past, from our childhood. So uh, I have clients who will say, my boss is so, uh, you know, he's so mean, he's so, he's so critical. Every time I say something, he says something. And, and you know, I, I, just, I just feel not good enough. But if you go back, you know, this belief, I'm not good enough, is the thing that is creating that experience. Joe Vitale, my mentor, has this wonderful you know, saying, which I'm not remembering exactly, but it's the belief that created the experience, not the experience that's creating the belief. So you have, you have a belief inside of you, 
right? You have an experience and then you have a belief. And then that belief starts to, you know, uh, keep creating our experiences. So some of the clients say, my boss is harsh, he's mean, he's rude. It's a belief system that's coming way back from childhood. Maybe the dad was very critical and the dad, you know, saw that there was nothing good enough and it was always critical and always saying, you could have done this better. You could have done this better. So there was never satisfying that. And then there's this belief that I'm not good enough and I'm not good enough. And you go into high school and then you go into working life and then you have different bosses and it's the same belief, this thing that keeps creating the consequences, right? So A doesn't directly lead to C, it's what's going on inside of you. And unfortunately, um, we don't have time to get into that, uh, that stuff, but it's, it's long held beliefs from childhood uh, that, that are creating so much suffering and misery in our lives, right? So um, what are some of the questions, right, that you can use to dissolve the meaning of whatever experiences you're having, whether it's going to networking meetings, whether it's with your family, whether it's, you know, uh, staff, colleagues, your children, right? So number one, the question is, so you have an experience, right? And you ask, so you have an activating, there we go, activating event. And then you say, you know, ask yourself, so what just happened? What just happened? Right? And then question number two is, what meaning have I given this event? What meaning have I given this? So you ask yourself what happened and the, the, you know, the way to do it is if you're having an upset, if you're emotionally upset about something, right? That's the way to kind of dissolve it is say, okay, I'm feeling upset. What just happened? And you can see what happened, right? And then what meaning did I give this thing that happened? What meaning have I given it? All right, so become aware of the meaning you've given this. This means that, right? This means that. It's a common phrase we all use. And then ask yourself, is this meaning part of the experience? Is this meaning inherent in the experience? Right? It's like somebody walked in, somebody said something, right? And you, you gave that some meaning. Maybe they looked at you in a certain way and you gave it, you gave some meaning to it, right? But ask yourself, is this inherent in the thing that just happened? Like, is it part of the event? And another thing I like to say is, can everybody see this meaning? Right? Can everybody see it? Or is it the mind making the meaning up? So the way you want to dissolve, you know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, you're at a networking event and you know some people, but they just go past you. Is it about you, right? Is it really about you that, and you said, oh, he just walked past me and he didn't even say hello. Is it the mind making the event? Or maybe this guy is in a rush and, you know, he's just moving fast because he needs to get something sorted out or, you know, it, it's, it's stuff like that. And so you want to question what just happened that upset me? What, what meaning am I giving this experience, right? This event. And is this meaning part of the, part of the experience? If it's not inherent in the event, then your mind is making up this meaning, right? Because everyone can't see this thing that yes, he walked in and he's pissing this one and this one off. It's not part of the event. It's your mind making the meaning up. So these are some questions that might be helpful anytime you have little experiences or big experiences. And if you, if you get into the habit of just questioning because you're upset and questioning, you know, all these questions, then you, it might help to calm things down. And here are some tips, right? To reframe and end the suffering. So for example, you're at a networking meeting, somebody moves past you, and you thought that they clearly saw you, but they just walked past you, right? 
and you say, oh, he's ignoring me. He thinks he's too good. He thinks oh, I'm not good enough and whatever, right? And I love the phrase, what if? What if it's not true? What if he was just busy? What if there was a lot on his mind? Like yesterday, I was telling you, I, you know, I was uh, giving dinner to my son and he snapped and, and, and whatever. And I said, oh, he's so rude. So what if he was just stressed about this thing that he was studying and it had nothing to do with me? What if he was in his own, uh, you know, in his own uh, space and thinking and, and trying to do something and his snapping at me had nothing to do specifically with me, but because he's been stressed about the, the test or whatever is going on. So what if, what if, it's not the way that I'm thinking. What if uh, this has nothing to do with me? Don't make it all about yourself. You know, we tend to think that we're so important. Everything around us is happening uh, is about us. They're talking, you know, and they're probably checking my dress out and, and they're thinking I'm wearing something weird. Like we go crazy. Little things, big things. We just make so much meaning out of it and create suffering. So what if? What if is a good, good way to question and reframe whatever is going on. Okay, number two is I call it. This is you know what I I come up. I um, it's my experience, so it's not like the rules of how to reframe. But disarm and speak vulnerably. What do I mean by that? So you know when if something's upsetting you, and instead of taking armor and gearing up for fight or you know. Um, you can just, you can just, you know, take the armor off and be vulnerable. So you can, I could go up and say, hey, you know, um, the way you just spoke, uh, I felt really upset. I, it, it really hurt me and, uh, you know, something like that, right? So you, you, you don't have to, as soon as you um, experience that this guy ignored me, okay. I'm going to ignore him because he thinks like this and he, and he, and he thinks too much of himself and blah, 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 blah. And so you, you, you arm yourself, right? And you start, uh, you know, gearing up for a battle now in which you're going to fight this, this thing, this experience, and also, you know, keep that suffering inside. So disarm, right? Battles are not won by, by, by fighting. You know, you, you, it's, it's, it's love. It's, it's, um, being human and it's it's allowing yourself to be vulnerable Brené Brown has such a wonderful TED talk on the power of vulnerability right purpose in the pain and you know sometimes we are in really painful situations we are in really painful situations I've been in situations so many times in my life whether it's not making enough money that feels painful not getting enough clients that feels painful going through some experience uh, you know that feels like oh my god why am i going through this and so sometimes i just tell myself like you know this is future data for teaching like i i do these facebook lives and i work with clients and i have so many experience to share with them and connect at that level because of, i've had all those experiences myself right and if I didn't have those experiences, I wouldn't have much data to share. And even if I did have data from internet, you know, there's a personal connection that happens if you yourself have been through it. And so sometimes I like to reframe the pain that I may be going through. It's like, it's just data. It's teaching material for the future. So I've been through this and now I know better. And so now I can teach this. So it's like a big reframe, even though, you're going through something, you take a different frame, right? You reframe by using a completely different perspective to move through whatever you're moving through, right? Because sometimes we are moving through something really painful and how do we, we didn't really assign meaning to it. So how do you move past that? So you get a gigantic frame and, 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 and you see it, see this issue through, through that different frame, right? And uh, again, problems as opportunities and possibilities. Whenever there's a problem, 
you know, there are new opportunities. I'm here speaking to you today because of a problem. I was in chronic pain, right? And my life had come to a standstill physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, because I was confined to bed rest indefinitely. I had to quit my job. I couldn't be a regular mom to my kids. And that was a problem, which became an opportunity because I healed myself. And it's, there have been so many new uh, opportunities and, and, and things that have been possible in my life because of, you know, you know, a problem. So what if you could, when you are in a, in, in a problem situation, what if you could see it as a challenge? Like, okay, this is a challenge because, you know, words have different energy and sometimes like a problem has this really heavy energy to it. Like, oh my God, I have a problem. But a challenge has a little aliveness to it. It's like you can overcome a challenge, right? So what if you could see the problem as a challenge and as a doorway to possibilities and opportunities? Like what if this was possible because of this situation? You, you know, you, you probably know of lots of stories about people, you know, during war that made tons of money or because, you know, even in jail, they've written amazing books. So it's, it's kind of reframing where you are instead of, you know, suffering from saying, this is where I am, my country's at war, and now everything's going to go downhill, because what happens is, you know, we have an experience, and if we keep believing that negative belief system, it becomes like a China wall of beliefs, and we keep getting the same consequences over and over and over. But, you know, lots of people who have the same experience, who have a different belief system that have different consequences over and over and over, right? So it's the mind that's creating the meaning and leading to suffering. So here's my little uh, thing that I want to uh, leave you with is what if, what if you could become aware of the meanings you're making? My life changed so much when I was able to release you know, even as an adult, I had tears in my eyes when I thought of that event and the meaning I had given that event and carried it for so many years in my life that I'm not good enough, right? And uh, it, it doesn't have to be such a, it's such a long drawn experience, but trust me, if there is, you know, if you're giving, if you're having a lot of pain and suffering, there are beliefs that are creating that suffering and usually these beliefs are coming from way back even if it's something to do with your current colleague or your current supervisor or your boss or your or your husband or your children or whatever is going on right we've got these beliefs that have been set way back when we were when we were children and you want to you want to go back and ask yourself when did i when did i be, you know start believing this about myself the very first time that's a great, uh, you know, a question to, to go back to discover your old, uh, the, the seeds, where, where were these seeds sown that have sprouted and now keep creating so much suffering in my life, right? So what if you could become aware of how you are giving meaning to the experiences and what if you could dissolve the meaning by questioning, right? And what might be possible for you in your work life, in your family life, in your uh, you know money money um, financial life, right? What might become possible for you? Here's another quick story that I want to share with you about money. So you know, one of the one of the experiences that I had when I was in a boarding school, I was about six, seven, seven years of age. And the, the experience was that every time I wanted money, I had to go to my house warden and she would take out this little notebook where she would have a score of how much money I'd spent. And so if it was 50 rupees and then she would cut it out and then it would become 45 rupees and then she would cut it out and then it would, it, it would keep lessening, right? And so my belief, my seven-year-old mind, 
subconsciously, like a lot of the times these beliefs come in subconsciously said, money only becomes less. It never grows. As an adult, I had experiences where I would make money and then slowly, you know, the ATM, you would see this diminishing money and there would not be enough, no matter how much money I was making. And there was a belief system that had been operating all the way from my childhood and experience created a belief that kept creating consequences until I was able to go back and release that because that's how solid our beliefs come, become and create suffering in our lives. So whether it's financial, or whether it's, uh, you know, with family, relationships, at work, what if you could address the meaning that you're giving to, to the experience and how would that, what would be possible for you? What new might flow into to your life? What new opportunities that are now being blocked might open up if you release the meaning and ended the suffering? So I hope that was helpful. Hi, Denise, all the way from New York. Saw your lovely pictures. Um, hi, Scott. Hi, Sandeepa. Rajeshwari, hi, from Germany. Uh, hi, Hari Raj, Lata. So nice to have you guys here. Hi, Ram. Um, thank you for joining live, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, if, if, um, you know, if you, you got something out of it, if you, if you got any, um, ahas please do share i hope this was helpful so i will see you next week again on uh, same time same day and until then you know question those meanings that are creating suffering in your life bye guys see you next week